let's talk about Limbo. I mean, Limbo. The other Limbo. How many Limbos are there? Well, not that many actually, as despite being accessible very early game, most people struggle to understand him as anything other than a troll's best friend. Time to clear that up. I'm the Gengineer, let's solve a practical problem. Unlocking Limbo is very easy. As soon as you gain access to Europa and unlock Arcwings, you'll be able to complete the Limbo Theorem quest. This will award you all component pieces of Limbo, leaving you to pick up the main blueprint from the market for credits. Limbo, like all Warframes, has its passive and four active abilities. Unlike most Warframes, Limbo's passive has three components. The first component is his Rift Walking ability. When Limbo dodges, instead of rolling like a normal Warframe, he'll slide forwards and slip into the Rift Plane, a parallel existence shifted just enough away from the normal world. Dodging again will return him to the normal plane of existence. Entering the Rift Plane this way leaves a tear in space for 5 seconds, allowing allies to touch it and enter the Rift Plane for 15 seconds as well. Limbo, however, can remain in the Rift Plane indefinitely. The second passive is that if Limbo kills an enemy that is in the Rift Plane, he regains 10 energy. The final passive is that of the Rift Plane itself. The Rift Plane is a parallel plane shifted just slightly from the normal plane of existence. Entities in the Rift Plane are still visible to everything, but become immune to normal weapon attacks from the normal plane. Likewise, entities in the Rift Plane cannot use normal attacks against things in the normal plane. While in the Rift, you lose the ability to interact with most non-rifted objects and pickups, but you can still revive allies. If you are in the Rift Plane, your vision will gain a cell shaded appearance and a faint ambience will indicate you've Rift Walked or been banished. Enemies in the Rift Plane, you can identify them by the shimmer around their feet and the fact you can't hurt them with your weapons if you're on the wrong plane. The Rift Plane isn't total immortality though. Both player and NPC abilities cross the Rift, including Warframe abilities, companion abilities and enemy special attacks, like the abilities of Xmas units. This means you can put your ally into the Rift Plane and let them strike down enemies with their own abilities, safe from most harm in the process. This also means Arsene Xmas fire waves are a major risk to Limbo, as the typical defense, rolling through it, will also remove Limbo from the Rift Plane. As one final bonus, Warframes regenerate 2 energy per second while in the Rift Plane, so long as they don't have a channeled ability active. Something to be aware of is that no matter what, the Operator cannot be in the Rift Plane. No abilities will put them there, and therefore the Operator's Amp cannot ever damage enemies in the Rift Plane. Now Limbo is more than just his passives of course, with his four abilities all interacting with the Rift Plane in some fashion. His first is Banish. Cast in a narrow 15 degree cone in front of him, Limbo sends enemies and allies alike in range on the same plane as him into the other plane. If Limbo is on the normal plane, this banishes everything to the Rift Plane. If Limbo is already in the Rift, Banish will target only entities in the Rift and return them to the normal plane. Limbo can also at any time hold cast Banish to return all banished entities to the normal plane. While Banish does have a damage stat, beyond very low levels it's nearly meaningless. It's all in displacing things into and out of the Rift, knocking them down in the process if they're an enemy. It's a basic ability that acts as a starting point to Limbo's whole Rift shenanigans. Banish is also available to other Warframes via the Helmet system, though such Warframes will have no means to get themselves into the Rift. Next then is perhaps his most kit-defining ability, Stasis. This will freeze all enemies on the Rift Plane if they do not have crowd control immunity, such as by having Overguard or being a boss unit. This means most units will be completely harmless to Limbo for the duration. Stasis is cast mission-wide, freezing enemies even if they're on the other side of the map and banished by a different player. On top of this, Stasis also freezes enemy ranged weaponry, including both hitscan and projectile based attacks. This reduces the threats Limbo could face even further, causing bombard rockets to pause midair and effectively causing Xmas units to fire blanks in the rift, even though they can still move. Be aware that enemy abilities and melee attacks are not rendered harmless this way, so for once in its life, an Xmas Butcher might actually be a threat to you. This freezing effect can hold nearly any number of enemies and projectiles for as long as the ability lasts, either until Limbo recasts the ability or the duration runs out. In both cases, you'll play an uncasting animation and a sound will notify you that it has ended. However, if too many projectiles are fired while in stasis, 
such as from an Exmos trooper constantly trying to unload its shotgun, this can cause stasis to fail. It takes a lot of projectiles for this to happen, but the consequences are an instant, silent, no animation end to stasis. It just vanishes. This lack of warning might be a bug, but that's what you've got to deal with. This shouldn't be an issue however, as anything still able to fire its gun in stasis is a high priority threat regardless and should be taken out. Limbo's third ability is usually the one where people get really confused, and that is Rift Surge. On cast, any enemies in range of Limbo that are inside the Rift become primed with Rift energy. If they then leave the Rift for any reason, such as Banish running out or Limbo forcing them out, then the Rift energy will explode from the primed enemy, rebanishing it and all others within the smaller range. This radial banish acts just like a normal banish, and is a way for Limbo to propagate his banish effect in a pseudo-automatic fashion, especially without having to return to the normal plane himself. Should Limbo instead kill an enemy that is primed with the Rift energy, it'll pass that energy on to a nearby non-Rifted enemy. This doesn't bring that enemy into the Rift, but does make them eligible to banish other enemies if the new one should enter, then leave the Rift while the energy is active. In lower enemy density missions, like Exterminate or most solo normal mode missions, this will not be a particularly helpful ability. Enemies will be killed in short order by you normally, so there's little need to rebanish the same enemy, and often too few enemies will be in range of the radial banish for it to be of much value to you. However, in higher enemy density missions, like a four-man survival or similarly intense steel path missions, this can allow you to turn a few banished enemies into a whole group of them. Limbo can hold cast banish to force all rifted and surged enemies out onto the normal plane, immediately triggering a rebanishment of them and all nearby. Once you do this, remember to recast Rift Surge to reprime those enemies again, if desired. But then, finally, the flashiest of abilities, we have Limbo's Cataclysm. Cataclysm will shunt an entire volume of the map into the Rift by way of a large rippling bubble. This bubble causes, again, token damage on creation, while also damaging all crates in the area, making it an option for loot hunting. The Cataclysm will shift various things into Rift that otherwise normally can't, or resist the effect, such as some boss type units, various defense objectives, and most pickups, though it still cannot put operators into the Rift. This is similar to a huge radial banish, without actually using the banish effect, affecting a whole zone of enemies who can then be held in place by stasis. Cataclysm doesn't count as being banished, therefore hold casting banish will not bring targets back out of the Rift. Instead to leave, a target must exit the bubble, or the bubble duration must expire. This ability is how you can keep Acolytes in the Rift, allowing you to keep other enemies in stasis while you deal with this much higher threat. Cataclysm's bubble isn't a consistent size. Over the ability duration, it will shrink in size slowly. This has an odd but useful interaction. Enemies can rush into the bubble, get rifted, be locked by stasis, and then shortly leave the bubble as it shrinks past them. You can use this opportunity to infuse them with Rift Surge, causing them to banish themselves and their allies as the bubble's edge passes them, holding them in the Rift for a longer period of time, rather than constantly popping in and out at the edge. When Cataclysm expires, it'll deal damage to all enemies inside, scaled in part by the average max health and shields of the targets inside. This damage, however, is very weak overall, and can be again mostly ignored. Limbo's abilities are not damage abilities. Outside of the lowest levels, they're only for displacement and control. Beyond the abilities themselves, three of Limbo's abilities also come with augments to support them if you choose. Banish has the augment Rift Haven, granting healing to allies when you banish them, which is a small support option. Cataclysm has Cataclysmic Continuum, which will extend the duration of Cataclysm and slow down the rate of shrinking when you kill an enemy contained within the bubble. This won't make Cataclysm regrow, however, but does make for a potentially indefinite duration on the bubble, if that's something you can use. The most impressive one, however, is Rift Torrent, an augment for Rift Surge. For each Rifted and Rift Energy infused enemy there is, Rift Torrent will give you a plus 30% weapon damage bonus, additive to mods like Serration. This bonus is multiplied by your strength, and has no scaling cap at all. If you somehow banish and Rift Surge 100 enemies, then you'd get a plus 3000% weapon damage bonus before considering strength. Lower values are far more realistic, but that's still an enormous additive weapon buff you can achieve. Now it's all well and good talking about what Limbo can do, but he's one of those frames where it's not immediately obvious 
how he can actually use all that. For spy missions, Limbo can use a combination of stasis and cataclysm to shift whole vaults into the rift. The stasis will prevent enemies from reacting to this until stasis times out, while cataclysm will force everything out of the normal plane. This prevents enemies from using their consoles to sound the alarm, destroys cameras, and lets Limbo walk straight through laser fields. Be aware that nullifiers will pop cataclysm instantly, and sensor regulators will sound the alarm the moment stasis runs out due to the damage they've taken. For any missions defending an objective, Cataclysm again can lock down an area, combined with stasis for near total immunity. Watch out for Xmas attacks slamming into your objective, but otherwise hold down the fort with ease against everything except nullifiers. For slaughter missions of any kind, use your preferred combination of Banish, Rift Surge and Cataclysm to bring enemies into the rift, stasis to render them harmless, and your favourite Eviscerator 9000 to tear them down at your leisure. So let's have a look at some build choices then to make use of all of this. Starting off with a super basic build for newer players to using Limbo. I mean completely basic with this setup able to fit onto a non-prime level 30 Limbo without even an Oricon reactor. The thought behind this build is simple. Casting stats for all but strength can be useful. An extra energy reserve can give you more capacity to use a mix of abilities as you get used to optimizing your cast and redirection for shields to help you tank some surprise damage at lower levels. This is not designed for more than basic early gameplay, but is enough to get you started on giving Limbo a whirl. For a much more advanced setup, making use of the polarities Limbo Prime has and focusing his kit, we can use this non-augmented setup, combined with some casting speed Archon Shards to save having to mod in natural talent. With again no need for strength, we can actually drop it below 100% in favor of range, this setup is designed to lock down an entire room all at once for a long time, allowing Limbo to clean up the objective or enemies as quickly or casually as desired. With such a huge range on Cataclysm, Limbo will easily grab enough enemies with it to help restore energy. The arcanes equipped here are entirely supporting extras and not relevant to the core setup. What stands out from default Limbo is the subsuming in of Silence instead of Banish. Silence is Banshee's subsume ability and it shuts down the abilities of enemies. This means no Arson Xmas Firewaves, no Energy Leech Bubbles, and no Acolyte abilities. Most importantly, this means no Silence from the Violence Acolyte. Without this, Limbo would be at risk of surprise Xmas attacks and completely at the mercy of some Acolytes when they spawn in. Violence would send Limbo running in fear if you don't have ample weaponry to evaporate them quick enough. Silence also has the secondary effect of a temporary stun on enemies when it applies, giving you a small grace period between casts of stasis to not immediately get deleted. The process is simple enough, put enemies into the rift, shut them down, shut them up, and kill them at your leisure. With this same ability setup, we can also tweak the stats to accommodate rift torrent. Doing so means losing a lot of range and a little duration, recovering our strength and equipping the augment itself in. This will give us 46% pure damage additive to mods per Rift Surge enemy, making it stronger than Serration with just 4 affected enemies, and stronger than Steel Power Farcanes with 8 or more enemies. The necessary reduction in range does mean that Silence is now down to 26.6 meters. It should still be just enough to prevent most Xmas casting their offensive abilities, but some can slip through. Removing Augur Reach would definitely put you at risk of being hit by Energy Leech and Arson Xmas abilities, even with Science Active. Otherwise, it's much the same loop. Cataclysm in area, Rift Surge the enemies, and keep them all silenced and stasis. While these two work for a core loop for Limbo, they do create large cataclysms that are vulnerable to nullifiers. To be quite honest, given Limbo himself is also forced out of Rift on crossing a nullifier bubble, He's just not that great at handling the Corpus nullifiers. You can opt for smaller bubbles, but this also means Rift Surge becomes much harder to apply and spread, Silence doesn't cover as far, and nullifiers can still walk up to you and ruin your day anyway. Turns out that hard counters to a core function are hard counters. The other couple of builds I have here are precisely what it looks like they would be from their names. Starting with the Argon one, this is designed specifically for the Hepic capture mission in the Void. It has extremely high range and efficiency, as well as loot detector, preparation, and mobilize, granting loot radar, starting energy, and particle velocity. The idea is to explode all enemies and crates in giant bubbles, with damage sufficient to achieve that on such a low level mission. 
Scoop the loot you can see on the map, learning Argon Crystals along the way. As proper defence isn't required, and we're already searching for loot, the first ability can be swapped out for Golden Instinct, to detect if there are any additional shinies in the area to treat yourself with. While Zaku can reach a higher crate popping range than Limbo, Zaku isn't acquired as early in the game, nor are they as snazzy looking when doing this. For Arcane Choice, Energize or Steadfast will help you keep spamming abilities all throughout, while Consequence allows for further improved parkour velocity to really bounce around the map. Again though, these are quite optional. And lastly then, I have some cheese. In the boss fight against Kaela de Thame on Sedna, she is alone in her arena. Limbo can dip into the rift and be basically untouchable by her. What he can also do is use Subsumed Smite to target her, creating radiation orbs that deal damage based on her own health, and then they turn back in and hit Kayla. Limbo's rift plane also protects him from the missiles Kayla sends down, which means Limbo can fully cheese Kayla, and similar other fights, with a single active ability he doesn't even own. You can also look to using Thermal Sunder for similar damage output against more ordinary enemies, though again, there are many far better options for that. This is just a particularly stupid cheese against a particular boss, because we're already beating down Kayla at her own arena. We might as well make it extra humiliating. Now, I've not mentioned it so far, but there is one crucial thing you must understand about Limbo, and many of you are probably already thinking it. Despite all these tips and details and builds, Limbo is still a pain in the ass in multiplayer. I can't fix that for you. Between the visibility issue on which enemies are affected and how, to the ability to be trolled intentionally or otherwise by Banish, to the general interaction issues it causes, Limbo works best alone, or with a dedicated squad who are well prepared and know how to work around Limbo's kit. Much like how Frost Bubbles stop allies shooting into or through them, Limbo stops allies shooting into or out of the rift, and that's just painful. For now, this guide should hopefully serve you well in understanding how to actually use Limbo's kit. As always, these videos are made possible by channel supporters, and I invite you to join in for extra benefits yourself over on Patreon. The link for that is in the video description. And as always, cross rifts, surge enemies, and fight well, Tenno.